By around Easter next year, this section of the Gateway Industrial Park at Morisset should be transformed into the mega market. A 10,000 square metre complex, space enough for up to 500 stalls. The people can either rent a stand for a day, a week, a fortnight or forever. It's up to them, they can come along if they um, do well, they can stay. If they don't, well, they can come back another day. Once up and running, the mega market is expected to generate between two to three hundred casual jobs. It is hard for young people particularly to get jobs in that area uh, and again it's a good boost for the area generally. But not everything got past council last night. A decision on a 28 lot subdivision next to Warners Bay High School was deferred again pending further information on sulphur dioxide fallout from the nearby Pasminko smelter. But the council's the view that they'd uh, better to be cautious and to check and make sure that uh, the monitoring is correct and we have the right levels. For developer Stronach though, enough is enough. It's heading to the Land and Environment Court and can't understand the delays. You have right next door to our side, if you have 1,100 children going to school, there's McDonald's on the corner, people eating hamburgers, and um, going back towards the Pasminko smelter, you can have a, a property uh, approved to build there this afternoon. Colin Baldwin, NBN News. Being sick is no fun at all, but nobody's told some of the children staying at Toronto Caravan Park. Families who've spent time at Ronald McDonald House this year are being treated to free accommodation, food and festivities for five days, all through the generosity of the local community. There's uh, 90 plus supporters of this whole project and um, we've got nine families down here this year. We've taken more than four and a half thousand dollars in donations just from the local people towards this whole thing. After all they've been through, the families are understandably making the most of the chance for some R&R. &R. Good nights, out for tea, you know, uh, speedboat rides, everything, you, you name it, it's here. It's the second time the Toronto Cares project has been put into practice, and there's even talk of getting other caravan parks across the country involved. Colin Baldwin, NBN News. Thanks to these 10 boys and dedicated coaching staff, Warners Bay High School can lay claim to being the best boys basketball school in the country. Today the team showed off the trophies it's worked all year to win, much to the delight of the school. It was an absorbing week for the relatively young squad that saw them eventually beat the Canberra-based Erindale College 76-56 for the national crown. After the finals it was just it was ecstatic. The squad loses just two players next year. Meanwhile, former Newcastle Knights coach Mal Reilly wants what he lost financially after his English club Huddersfield merged, leaving him without a job. Reilly had two years to run on his contract before the merger and has launched legal proceedings in an attempt to get a full payout. Huddersfield finished last in the recent English Super League season. And the Newcastle Wildfires are still no closer to finalising its future in the state rugby competition with little set at last night's New South Wales 
Rugby Union AGM. But Newcastle Rugby Union want to know just what's going on and are looking over the wildfire's financial and player details tonight ahead of its meeting tomorrow. They're taking a very you know, pragmatic business uh, approach to it, uh, same as we are. They say that we shouldn't play unless we're competitive and I agree with that. The wildfires have already lost the services of Australian under-21s rep Tim Rapp and skipper Andrew James, while Jared Heaney held further talks with Sydney clubs overnight. On the 28th of May 1997, 47-year-old tax office worker Philip White was ambushed and attacked by two teenagers next to Three Mile Creek at Medford. Now a new bridge has been built across the creek dedicated to Mr White. The bridge was officially opened today by Medford school students as part of the growing Landcom development. It uh, links the school and to the station and so forth. It allows buses to travel through and generally has a lot more surveillance in this area so that it makes the, the place much more uh, much safer and user friendly. Meantime, a belated opening at Thornton Public School today with new classrooms and an outdoor learning area being officially unveiled three years after they were built. These buildings were finished at the end of 1996 and uh, we've been using them now for three years but officially today they're open. Paul Love, NBN News. A gardens like this is, is something that really adds to the tourism potential, uh, there's no question about that, but it also adds to the amenity of the people who live here because it doesn't cost any to come in. Heading the agenda of the Hunter Health Board this morning, a package which will change the face of health care in the region. For the board, it's an exciting development, a very interesting package that will improve our future health services in the Hunter. The new look service will see a proposal forwarded to the Department of Health, which includes the closure of the Royal Newcastle Hospital and the sale of its oceanfront site, a new Mater Hospital, a bone and joint facility, a polyclinic for inner city Newcastle and the upgrading of Belmont Hospital. According to the 10-year plan, the package will save more than $70 million, but some say the centralisation of services will come at a much higher cost. And John Hunter will practically sink and at the moment the place has been open since 1991 and there still is no public transport infrastructure supporting it. Also at issue is the support of the community. Despite a protest petition which has collected more than 4,000 signatures, Hunter Health denies the public's role has been a minor one. No, I would um, disagree with that. The proposals that were into the preferred option were developed over three or four years and those three or four years also included wide-ranging consultation with staff and community. That we knew that it wouldn't please 100% but we were very pleased that it pleased 90 to 99%. Helen Kapalos, MBN News.
It was 1929 when 10,000 miners rallied in protest of scab labour being brought into work in the Rothbury coal pit. What began as a mass march by workers protesting against the 15-month lockout turned into a bloody riot. One striking worker, Norman Brown, was shot dead. Dozens of other miners injured in the gun battle with police. Today, that fateful day was commemorated in a moving wreath-laying ceremony at the Rothbury Mine Memorial site. Retired miner Jim Comford was 16 at the time. His life forever changed. It's something if you live to be a thousand, you'd never forget it. This year, the 70th anniversary of the incident, only a handful of veterans remain. Their ranks ever depleted by the hands of time. Well, that's the tough part about it because I know none of us will be here for the 80th. Today's ceremony was truly a changing of the guard. Present day miners taking over the fight for fair pay and conditions. You can only pay the blokes in the industry full credit today because they're spending more time on the picket line against Rio Tinto than ever we did. Tanya Carlisle. NBN News. He's been labelled the new sensation amongst iron men. Kai Hurst trains with Grant Hackett and is touted as an Olympic 1500 metre swimmer. Understandably, he dominates in the ocean first and foremost. He beat Josh Blair into second at their last outing and Josh is getting sick of the hype surrounding Hurst. It wasn't too long ago that I beat him in the last round last year, so he's not unbeatable like uh, some people are saying and I think you've really just got to get out there and stick it to him. He feels a win could be vital this weekend at Coolangatta if he wants to take out the Ironman title. Sitting second at the moment behind Kai, so I mean this weekend is the telltale, I mean for the series I think, I mean if you've really got to peg him back and, and win this weekend so that I mean he doesn't get too far ahead. With all the usual festive spirit and enthusiasm, last night's show was not one to be missed, even by old Saint Nick himself. But this nativity play was one step closer to being the real thing, with some even more special guest appearances. And to wrap up the evening, Santa was on hand to give out presidents to the good boys and girls. Meanwhile, at the Anglican Church in Cardiff, volunteers have pulled together to offer some Christmas cheer for the less fortunate. The Samaritan-run charity aims to provide $100,000 worth of toys and food parcels this Christmas, all donated by the community. And Marathon Stadium received some special attention today as finishing touches were added in preparation for Sunday's carols by candlelight. It's a really good um, fold, you know, where they can get a bit back in, in themselves personally. The volunteers from City Care's rehabilitation program have been helping out with Carols by Candlelight now for nine years. Yeah, look, it's great. It really builds that self-esteem. You know, lifts their whole profile. They feel great about themselves being able to come in instead of ripping off the community, coming in and doing a bit of work back in the community. Adam Harper, NBN News. And it's a full function branch, so we can do all from insurance to investment to housing loans and normal transactional business.
An old face at Breaker Stadium, but Troy Halpin was home to try and help end Newcastle's winning streak. Midfielder Mark Wilson already had one shot hit off the post before he set up the home sides first with a perfect pass to John Bonavoglia, who marched on to his fourth goal in as many games and his seventh for the season. Glory keeper Jason Petkovic could have felt hard done by after this cost his team a free kick and breakers skipper Shane Price turned Fortune into another goal. 2-0 down, Perth showed why it's one of the competition favourites. Halpin's goal seven minutes later levelled it up and brought a stunned silence from his one-time home crowd. Brad Widgerek was lucky this touch went unnoticed. But there was no doubt Bonavoglia was fouled at the other end. However, so was the ensuing penalty kick from Price. The match winner came on the stroke of half-time, Harper setting up Travis Dodd to gain the lead for good. Breakers keeper Bob Catlin made sure the lead was kept with some great body on the line saves as Newcastle continue to haunt Perth and make it four wins in a row. Next year we, we should send the three points to Newcastle and should be better to have a training in Perth and we can save a long, long journey. We can't beat Newcastle, I don't know why. After some disappointing conditions in Hawaii for the World Junior titles, local legend Samba Man has returned and is amongst the surfers aiming to take out the Avoca Pines Classic this year. Next year is my last year and um, I want to win a Pro Junior next year so that's my goal. But Samba may be up for more of a challenge than he expected this weekend, with more than just the local surfers coming along for the ride. So we've got all the local stars here, plus stars from other areas, Newcastle and Illawarra. Today's competition was also part of the Australian Circuit Championships, which has attracted shortboarders from as far as Queensland. But the Pines Classic is known for more than just its traditional competition. Spectators and competitors gather for the Big Air session. We've got $4,000 in prize money and another 1000 for the uh, Toyota Air Show tomorrow. If the surf conditions hold, the finals and the Big Air session will be held tomorrow at Avoca Beach. Several current first grade Knights players are products of a junior program that has become the envy of many NRL clubs. While Newcastle has been criticised recently for letting promising talent go, that isn't stopping them from developing replacements. Yeah, I think it's important that the, the young fellas know that us older kind of guys are, are behind them and, and we support what they do and you know I'm sure that'll give them a bit of a lift and hopefully you know we'll see them in our senior ranks in the years to come. And while there was plenty of craft wrestling for space in deep water off Nobbies today, it was closer to shore that the real action lay. The annual Stella Kappa competition brought the best competitors from each local club together. However, the surf often had the last say. With eight competitive crews already at the club, Nobbies couldn't wait to get its hands on a third surf boat, but not before it was launched. The christening itself was thirsty work. The boat is named after Pete Wilson, who spent 40 years at the club, many of those in surf boats, and it's a real family affair with Pete's son Tim and daughter Catherine both in crews at Nobbies. Just up the sand and some other beachgoers were having their maiden voyages on a different kind of craft. Riding on Lane Beachley's world title success, Surfing Australia wants more young women in the surfing ranks and is conducting special training days to teach the basics. Merriweather Stacey Lancaster is one who can see the importance of such days. She recently placed fourth at the Nationals after teaching herself how it's done. When I started, none of this was around and it would have been good because it's much easier to learn this way.
Newcastle has enjoyed plenty of success in the annual under-19s clash against Illawarra, but at 5 for 82, things weren't looking good. Graham Brooks tried to break the shackles, cracking a quick-fire 29 as Newcastle moved to 122. But Scott Tutton ended his day, finding Brooks's edge. Chad Hammond didn't stay long, gone for one after Aaron Hickson snapped up a slick court and bowled. Ali tried to get things moving on the scoreboard, but was caught out going for one too many, out for 38. Charles Coggan added five before he too headed back to join Ali in the stands. But a 47 run last wicket partnership between Garth King and Jason Fenwick got Newcastle a competitive score of 191. Fast bowler Matthew Baker is no stranger to bending his back for Australian junior sides, but to reach the youth championship team was a real achievement. I actually didn't expect to make it before I went over because I've been out for a year and just coming back now. And I, when I heard my name, it was like, all my Christmas has come at once. While based at home in Newcastle, Matt travels to Sydney to play each weekend in an effort to stay well in selector sites, with the Australian youth team usually a springboard to bigger and better things. It's always in the back of your mind, like that is obviously a goal for the future, but at the moment I'll stick to the 19s and see how we go from there. Aaron O'Brien from the Central Coast was also selected for the side that will tour Sri Lanka after taking two for five during a game at the National Championships in Western Australia. His ability with the ball only bettered by his bat, knocking up 107 in the same match. 
While the 18-year-old is no stranger to international cricket, it's always hard to pad up against nerves. It's starting to get there, but not yet. I don't know. It's scary. The four-week-long championship starts early next month. The human race has been celebrating Christmas for about 2,000 years. One can't help but think that as we reach the end of the 20th century, that somehow we've missed the point. Why did God become a human being if not to show us a better way to live? Yes, at Christmas time, God says to us through Jesus Christ, the baby born in the manger at Bethlehem, that love and forgiveness are better ways to relate than violence and anger. Surely after 2,000 years, you'd have thought we'd have learnt that. Well, maybe the penny will drop for all of us this Christmas. A very happy Christmas to you all. Greetings, friends. Christmas is about birth. It heightens our senses, it intensifies our emotions, it demands attention. There's a story told of a couple who informed their four-year-old daughter Jane that she's soon to have a baby brother. Jane shrieks with delight. Promise me, she says to her parents, promise me that as soon as he is born, I will be the first to speak to him. Promise me. Dad and Mum are somewhat surprised but agree. The night on which Jane's baby brother is born, Dad carries her to the cot. Jane whispers into his ear, tell me, tell me what God looks like for I'm forgetting. Mum and Dad and my kids in the club seem to have forgotten. St. John reminds us that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. May the child of Bethlehem help us to remember, to remember God's love that we may not forget those who need our special compassion and care this Christmas. God bless. A humble bunch of flowers was placed on the Tilligree Bridge at Saltash today, a tribute to those killed last night. It's believed two men and a female were travelling west along the Nelson Bay Road around 9.15 when their early model red Commodore sedan crossed the centre line on the bridge, colliding with an oncoming car. All three in the red Commodore were killed instantly, none of the victims was carrying ID. A 65-year-old man and a 5-year-old boy in the other vehicle suffered head and chest injuries. The occupants of a third car that slammed into the wreckage were uninjured. The region's Westpac rescue helicopter flew close to power lines to reach the scene before flying the injured to the John Hunter Hospital. Police say it's been a bad start to the Christmas break. Four motorists killed in two accidents. Um, one yesterday afternoon down at Swansea, a motorcycle rider, and then three later on yesterday evening um, on the Nelson Bay Road. And it's accidents like these, especially at Christmas time, that serve as a terrible reminder of the dangers of speed and fatigue on our roads. Paul Lobb, NBN News.
Oh. Have a good safe ride, mate. Good, we'll, thanks very we'll much, Bill. look forward to seeing kids. So Wait, see you. Kids. Bill. Bye. 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 Hordes of shoppers descended on Hunter stores, all searching for that elusive bargain. I always find it very exciting to come into South Time, <laughs> this time of the year. Just see what's around, let my wife do some shopping and see what bargains there are for next year for Christmas. Most consumers were happy and so were the retailers, with major centres predicting that profits will be up on last year. The lines at return counters were almost as long as those at the cash registers, but for the most part people were spending rather than returning. Everything's going really well, people are rushing in getting all the benefits of the sale. They're buying a lot uh, with cash, which seems to be uh, surprising, uh, but there is, a, you know, the credit cards are filling up uh, also. And it's the use of credit that has at least one welfare organisation worried about the sales. The people buy things they don't really need buy them on credit and then spend the, the rest of the year paying them off and often if there's a crisis they don't have enough income to actually both pay off the credit bill and meet their weekly shopping bill. Colin Baldwin, NBN News. While many industries in the Hunter are slowing down, the aviation sector seems to be taking off. In the past few years, Impulse Airlines has been progressively moving more and more of its operations into the region, and recent figures show it's paying dividends. It's been a good year for Impulse, and um, we're, having, we're seeing revenue growth and passenger growth you know, in around that 20% mark, and we're continuing to do that year after year. While Impulse is planning a call centre and pilot training program for the Hunter, the deregulation of the aviation industry should see the carrier expand further afield. More flights are being planned, which could potentially mean additional planes and jobs. Putting a service in the Tauri, we've been looking at that for some time and we've never walked away from that. And as well, you've got areas in Port Macquarie as well as up through Ballina where we're assessing the opportunities of either putting in new flights or putting in some more flights into those areas. Colin Baldwin, NBN News. 